welcome back part three mild mutant thank you guys for coming back to another episode and watching the third part of this series um again let's not waste any time let's get it You're looking sturdy. Says there's an interesting place nearby that no one knows about, but doesn't really want to talk about it right now. Needs a logical reason to reveal the secret. Says it's hard to keep a secret from someone as smart as you. Might as well tell you where the place is as you'll figure it out eventually. Says you should make sure the automaton stays out of the way. Understands you have other places you need to go. Mercadorpa's outpost, a Jagni tribe stronghold. Let's see. <laughs> Says it's time to set the outpost free. Inflict as little damage as possible as you make your way through to the rival captain. Uh. 
Will it reload you? Freedom is not worth having in a world that's doomed. Here's the first line of defense. a bomb lover. Worthy wheel works that drain pipe. Spin the twirly wheel and open that drain. Everything's clocking together. Keep going. That cage is holding a helper.
they never lost hope you'd come, but weren't sure if they'd last long enough to see it. Says the tribe's been hard on them. Wants revenge on those who caged them, but trust you'll take care of it. A sharpshooter, the scaffolding looks unstable. Better stay clear of the Red Ray. Here's the second line of defense. A big bump will bring it down. Switched off the light. A barrel shoot. Smack it to get a barrel out of it, then hit it toward the gate and blast it. That looks slow. Shoot it and watch it blow. Not too close, though. Oh, boom, you're in. Almost there. The outpost belongs to your tribe now. He says you made them weaker, but they won't give up. Your Sifu thanks you. Your tribe is growing stronger.
Get out full of us in Habile. Says you did a great job capturing the outpost. You've earned the privilege of carrying the tribe's weapon. Look out for Los Sada. Figures the honor belongs to the tribe, too. Out of date says he's doing his best to keep up, but from what he can tell, it seems you're making progress with the tribe conflict. Kobwa, yak. He kobe. Ifari kobo far. He had a feeling you'd get along with the Myriad tribe, but it remains to be seen what the future holds for your alliance. Muk bebuk kabobe farhi. You seem to share the same values as the Myriad tribe. You both have the same optimistic outlook on life. At least, for now. But Out of Date emphasizes that solving the tribe conflict won't matter unless you help make a stand against the World Eaters. That doesn't sound good. Out of Date's forebodings are justified. The Jumbo Puff needs to be taken care of. Fabube, Muk Kufar, Kanjita Dwela Bufo. He says the time has come to confront the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Kanjita Dwela Bufo. Gizmo is working on making his Mekton strong enough to endure the oxygen deprived dead zone all the way up to the World Eater. You should get over there and see what you can do to help. Check out those guns. Angry that the end of the world means running from monsters. If you're not good at it, you should practice on a run bed first. It's called a tread run board. Like maybe they used it to grind treads? How silly, huh? Claims you run onto it and it moves the ground under your feet. Says a run board is big, like a piece of walkway with wheels. It might be broken, but you can fix it, maybe. Then you can practice running inside, where it's safer. Like the way your mind runs.
claims to have strange things from the dead zone that are so rare they need to be seen to be believed. Says the place is in high demand, so no wonder you're eager to get down to business. Can't hurt to look. Better than a bare head. That's a gnote. Easy prey for Looper Lupin. For everyone else, they're a perfect mount and easily tamed if they are kept fed. Don't let your mount ignore you. That's a resource totem, a monument left behind by those that picked scrap, trying to keep the area clean. Always good to have some wood scrap like that on hand.
It's the Chug Yard. Need a key? The board mainly has posts from those that used to work at the Chug Yard back in the days gone. They don't make much sense these days. Not much more to say about the board, but Gizmo is holed up in the underyard here working on that mecton of his. The Toxanol Corporation used to run chugger chuggers out of here, big machines on rails with smokestacks that fouled the air. They can carry you anywhere you like. Well, anywhere that they go to, and then you can leg it from there. You're on the right track. Keep your eyes open. Tribes always scavenging for scrap, and the yard has plenty to go around. But they should have stuck to hunting instead of playing around with sprites. Bomber Bonkers busy ram banging the door. This is your chance. Change the future for good or bad. Let's see. Yes, you can do anything. The sky's the limit. Now, let's take this back to Earth. Wow, you really took that all the way down to the end. In flames.
nothing can slow you down. It's a wonder some of these up and downs still work. Guess they built machines better in the past. The spent nuclear fuel that Toxanol dumped in the surf had detrimental effects on the marine habitats, while the overflowing landfills contaminated the groundwater. Combined, this sent their world hurtling on an inevitable road to ruin. I need to brush up on my Wando, but I have a feeling he believes it was you that caused the bang at the yard. Oh, and he says he knows you. You used to call him Gizmo. He gave you the oil-greased hands when he taught you how to upcycle. Gizmo remembers you as a nice kidling, and he can still sense the warmth of your good heart. But Gizmo says how you experience a memory can be different. You know the story, but sometimes the truth it brings is personal. He'd lie if he claimed it was all good. You changed after your Moomer and Popsy passed, and he understands why you had to leave. The old village being a constant reminder of what happened. Gizmo says he also has re-memories from the long gone, but unlike you, he doesn't think of the past, for it's gone. He understands history made Loopa Loopin a big part of your past, your present, and soon, your future. You still believe there's some good in everyone. You still have hope for tomorrow. He says you should know that what's meant to be will always find a way, but history shouldn't consume you. Gizmo understands you still have strong feelings, but urges you to keep them under control. You've witnessed firsthand what it'll lead to. Yes, that's the way. No arguing with that. Sometimes your gut is flat out wrong. Don't ever doubt yourself. You are number one. Even the dark knows you're better than this. Stick with me. We'll rule the world. Would like to know if you ever doubt the choices you made on the path that brought you to this point. Would you have been happier going in a different direction? Supposes that's all any of us can do. Hard to believe the world is actually going to survive. Just seemed impossible till now. Grateful to you for coming back and doing your best to change things. You were the only chance they had. Wonders if you liked working with the Myriad. They always seem so centered and so seeking. 
thinks that's more than most are. It's hard to keep to a path like that. But that's not important now. Gizmo says it's taken a long time to bring the past up to the present, and where you go from here is up to you. You need to set the past aside, at least for now. He can't leave the Underyard as he has no protection against the vacuum in the Dead Zone, so you need to salvage scrap to upcycle the Mekton, starting with the old crate outside. You should return when you've retrieved the scrap. There's no time to waste if you want to make the Mekton strong enough to fight the Jumbo Puff. It's the part of the land that suffered most from the apocalypse. It's deprived of oxygen, making it next to impossible for anything but creatures that were most contorted by the contamination. Cancel your picnic plans. Looks like the switches need to be turned to match so enough charge can flow through the conductors. Just a few moves left, make them count. Good, that's enough electric current to initiate the actuators and activate the framework. They're short of breath and death to this zone. Better take care. He who half breathes, half lives. That's the leftover you're looking for. valuable. Save your energy.
He says that's enough to get the Mekton functional. You'll have an engine, a fuel soaker, a gun and a gathering net, but no armor, nor enough oxygen supply. He made a suction device so the Mekton can use the black tar as an instant refuel. You can also use it to clear oily goo puddles, so you can pass and access hard to get to areas. He's been working on another project for the Mekton, a cannon, but it needs ammunition, and by that he means the scripts. He says if they're trained right, they'll turn into a distraction for the Jumbo Puff. The best way to find Squibs is to go talk to Moog. He knows the ins and outs of every breathing thing left alive after the apocalypse. Unfortunately, this means you'll have to venture farther out into the dead zone than Moog's camp on the steep depot. Once you find Moog, he'll be able to give you directions to where you'll find Squibs. He noticed the Jumbo Puff has a short attention span, so the script should distract it long enough for you to inflict some damage. Breaks if you want them. The grease monkey's mecton is built sturdy, just like himself. Can you imagine how this place used to look before the dead oil flood? might want to hold your breath before you head any further. You're about to witness the breathtaking vistas of what's known as the Dead Zone. In the old world, roads like this really led somewhere. Now, most of them lead to disaster. That over there is Steepo Depot, the cliffside that Moo hangs on to. Let's see. This one's impressed to see you out here. He figured you'd be dead by now. Not many are as tough and clever as you must be. Claims he goes after the most dangerous game, huge monsters. Moog says that all your power doesn't do you a bit of good if you're not willing to pull the trigger when the time comes. Choosing what to kill and what to spare are the most important decisions you'll make. You might have a steady aim, but you need to be sure that you pick your targets with care. 
Tiava. It's hard to make those life or death decisions for others, but someone's got to do it. Otherwise, they'll do it themselves and you know they'll miss. Shon claims he mostly kills whoever he doesn't like. Says it's wild that the world seems to be coming back, but he supposes that means more monsters for him to shoot. Wonders why you work so hard to keep things alive. Bullets help thin the herd instead. Says you should give up on working with the stubborn myriad. He keeps trying to put out their lights and they keep putting up new ones. Madame Wakumo Nashvaya says they keep the monsters away. He needs them closer, not farther. Goga. But enough of that, right? He says the wildlife, nature, has changed and turned against us. Instincts of survival took over when the world changed. He's not sure about their veggie diet anymore, and if it's changed, who knows what it's done with the chemical composition of their body output. Some right now, though, he feels he's come to a point where he's got a pretty clear idea on the whereabouts of monsters, both tall and short. Says as big as they are, the world is bigger. To find where they are, you need to see where they've been. Moog says you must learn to walk before you can run. It takes practice before you can call yourself a monster hunter. Fortunately for you, he can help. He understands you need to start off with something small before you go big. There's no better place to start than a squip cave. Hunting down a couple of these little critters for yourself should keep you on your toes. Thinks you have bigger issues than your so-called haunting skills if you're going to nitpick on his grammar. Birds can't breathe to sing. It's the Squip hole-up. Place is just filled with critters. Kaboom! could open this. Once the volatilization from the nuclear waste evaporated, a volatile gas rose through the soil and infested structures, even Toxanol's own buildings. So, in a way, they caused their own death. There are things out there waiting for you.
Ooh, idea. Go knock the lid off that sludge truck. It'll fill the place up when you can get up to that entrance there. You need to line up the switches so they match. Just a few moves left. Make them count. Good. That's enough electric current to initiate the actuators and activate the framework. Time for some sharp shooting. This is the way to travel. Your lungs aren't built for this. Back to sneaking around. He says that's enough scripts to sustain the Mecton's claw crane cannon with infinite ammunition. Well done. It's not his cleanest invention so far, but it gets the job done. Use it to suck up gooey oil puddles in the Mecton's way so you can pass. Gizmo's made vehicles before to confront the Jumbo Puff himself, but failed. But this time, 
it's different. The Mekton will be strong enough to do the job. It's time to put a stop to the World Eater now, otherwise he fears the damage it's caused to the tree already will be too much to handle. He asks you to not even think about taking on the Jumbo Puff on foot. You'll need the Mekton to do the job, take his word for it. There's time to improve the Mekton before you confront the Puff. There are more wreck boxes out in the dead zone with gear you should be able to equip the Mekton with on your own. He got the idea to build the Mekton when he found a big crate containing the metal frame for something Toxanol had named an exoskeleton. Gizmo wants to help if he can. Thinks it's great to see you out and doing things all day long. You should go see the Pichu tribe. Their hole is a sight to behold. Wouldn't be surprised if you met again. Gizmo wants to help if he can. You need to help Gizmo defeat the Jumbo Puff before it... Wishes you'd been better as a kid, but he's glad you finally figured it out. Understands completely. Gizmo wants to help if he can. Says you should take it easy. it right here um looks like we got pretty pretty far we made a pretty good stretch this round um a little bit more action than the last one a little bit less cutscenes. they are still pretty long uh but it looks like the next episode um i will be fighting this jumbo puff so stay tuned for that um as always thank you guys for watching thank you for your time don't forget to leave a comment like subscribe uh suggestions down below if you guys have anything for me and i'll see you guys in biomutant part four